Okay, cool. So last year, just to recap for anyone who wasn't here, so last year we spoke about, you know, how do you create a product that is sustainable? So focusing on, on just one or two core features, you know, minimizing the settings that you put in there just to not confuse the customer and sort of waste their time in a way. It goes very quick from convenience to wasting their time when you add features to a product. So that's kind of where we went last year. But this year what we're talking about is, is quite similar, but at the same time it's, it's not about creating a sustainable product, it's about taking that sustainable product and actually creating something more from it, like from actually creating a successful business. How do you, how do you turn that on, right? So, you know, everyone says you should start a talk with a joke, but I'm not going to go down that road today. Um, yeah, everything, I'll tell you a bunch of jokes later if you want. But I kind of wanted to start with an exercise. So just take a minute and just try and think of a company like, that builds products that you just absolutely cannot get enough of, right? Just think of a company, every product they launch, you just have to have it, right? You can't wait for that product to come out. You know, you're following blogs, tweets, everything. Just take a minute and just think of that kind of company and just, just think of like who they are. Who's thinking of Apple right now? Pretty much everyone, right? So Apple have created this amazing thing where they care so much about what they do and about who they're speaking to that they just know what to do, right? So who's, who's ever received an email from a company, it can be any company, but you feel like the email is talking right to you, right? They're talking at you. You know, I get, I get emails from Zapier, uh, which is a sort of an online, they kind of, they take web apps and allow you to merge them together and create new little tools for yourself. And whenever I see an email from them, I read the email and go, you guys are talking to me, you know, this is, this is right now for me. I, I, I love this email because it's telling me everything I want to know, right? And that's what you call a cookie monster effect, right? But why a cookie monster? Because, you know, you guys know, you just can't get enough of it. It's not that, it's not that he likes cookies, right? He loves cookies. It's, it's just, it's a, a, a very core of his being is that cookies are there. You just you cannot get enough of it, right? And I think that's ultimately what we're all trying to create at the end of the day is, is that guy, you know, that Apple fanboy who presses his nose up against the glass of the iStore, you know, just waiting for the iPhone 6 and just seeing, you know, is it going to bend or not? Um, you just, that's what you want. But it's very difficult, right? So, I mean, we, we've all been through this. You create a product that you think is super exciting and, you know, as a developer, I, I've done this plenty of times as well. You, you build something that you think is absolutely amazing. And you spend hours coding, you know, three in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning, whatever it is. And you just, you're in love with this product. And then you tell someone else. And they look at you and they say, but that's not that great. Um, you know, that's been done by someone else. Or why is it so great? And they start sort of picking your idea apart. And that, oh, you know, even worse, you, you build something and you're really excited and you launch it and there's just like this hum, you know, just like the tumbleweeds start rolling and there's nothing because nobody's actually engaging with you, you know, and just one thing that Chantal said, which I think was one of my big takeaways was for, you know, analytics and performance and getting traffic, like you said, you can get as much traffic as they need, right, because there's a switch for traffic. If you do the right things in the right way at the right time, there's a switch. You can get that traffic. And that's kind of what I'm, what I'm really here to say today. Is, you know, with building a business or building a product that is as incredible as an Apple product or building a brand that is as incredible as an Apple brand, there's a switch for it. And that's why we're going to go find the cookie monster. Right. So enough of him for now. Um, where do we start? So I'm just going to jump through two slides. So this one and I'm doing the right turning thing again as well. And this one. But these kind of go hand in hand. You know, so know, know your customer and then build the products that people need. Right? So these things are kind of painfully obvious, really. But it, it just makes so much sense at the end of the day. Um, when it's one of those things that is, it switches in your mind. And you, you just kind of have to realize it. So what, it, what does it mean? Okay, so know your customer and build a product that they need, 
right? So basically this means talk to someone and solve a problem, right? In Apple's case, it's more like meet a desire, but it's kind of solve a problem as well because they were trying to do this thing where make a difference, um, appeal to an audience that is a bit more um, edgy, you know, initially like the, the, the Be Different campaign all the way back in the day, that was very much about just about appealing to a desire to be someone unique and someone different. And it's, it's really it. So, you know, if, if the problem is that my website is slow, then caching could be the solution. But it's not about the solution right now. It's about knowing who you're talking to and knowing what problem they have. So a good example is something we've been dealing with recently. So new store owners or a company who wants to set up their first online store finds it very difficult to do so. So that's your customer, right? So your customer is somebody who wants to set up their very first online store. So they have a product, they have something they want to do online to, to sell, but they, they don't have an online platform at this point. And what is their problem? Is that they don't know how. Okay. So you've got a customer and a problem. But now we kind of need to start picking this thing apart. So you can make a couple of assumptions at this point. And the whole key is to make a few assumptions and then find the one assumption that if it's not correct, will cripple the, the product or cripple the business. So when I say product, you can pretty much interchange the words product, service, or business for this because it's exactly what it is, an abstracted science. So if you say maybe one of, the, one of the assumptions could be that they actually don't want to take the time. You know, well you can assume, you can say the customer will take the time to learn how to do this themselves. Right? That's an assumption, that's a huge assumption. Because if I'm a business owner selling juice, right, I don't really need to, to know how to do an online store. All I need to know is can that store make me money online? And that's where Chantel comes in. And yeah, so if you make that assumption, then you can go and actually start engaging people and saying, okay, um, I'm going to go and talk to a bunch of store owners, and you can ask them questions that would answer that assumption. You know, do you actually have the time, or would you take the time to learn how to do this yourself if the resources were made available to you? Maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. But if you say, okay, maybe five out of the ten people that I speak to, if they say yes, then I can go ahead and that's, that's creating a, a particular type of product. Because then you can say, well, my product is a training resource. It's documentation. It's an, an email course. You know, it's things like that that you can charge for, which take very little time to put together. It's, it's not about coding it. It's about trying to find the best solution for your customer. Right? So what if, that hap what if they don't? You know, what, if, what if they say, well, actually, I don't care about taking the time to do it myself. I just want someone to do it for me. Then you've got another, another idea there because you could say, well, maybe it's a concierge service. Maybe what my business or product is, is where I actually do this for people, right? And I build their store for them and then perhaps educate them afterwards. But it's about, at its core, it's about finding who that person is and solving their problem, right? So everyone has to eat sometime. So Spur is kind of always going to be in business, right? Because everyone gets hungry. So that's the problem that they solve, essentially. So when it comes, let's just dial it back to WordPress. We've talked about Spur and Juice and all kinds of crazy things. I, mean, I, I can go on about all different analogies for ages, but just bringing it back to WordPress. So companies out there that are doing WordPress premium products at this point have largely been going since about 2008. So they kind of got in right at the correct time, didn't do any of this kind of validation. This is all after the fact. Um, it was very natural. It was probably done, but not recognized. So an example would be something like a company like Gravity Forms. Well, probably, if you look back now and say, well, what problem do you guys solve? They would probably say form creation is difficult, or form creation is not elegant. And WordPress just happens to be the platform that they build on. But the core is that form creation is not elegant. Okay? Or ninja forms would be the opposite. Say form creation in WordPress is not elegant. You know, so there's subtle differences there. But why I say look past the super awesome ultimate product. Okay? This is something that happens all the time. I mean, ha who's seen a product called something like um, 
ultimate SEO manager for WordPress or something to that effect. Everyone's seen this, right? Super awesome ultimate SEO manager gets you all the traffic.com for WordPress. You know, and it's the longest name ever. Just tell people what you do. I mean, it's, this, is, this is the way that WordPress companies hide because they're insecure. So they go, I'm going to put some fluff on top of my product to try and make you believe that my product is great. Right? And you install the product and it's got 50,000 options. It actually doesn't show you anything. Um, a good example of this is I reviewed a product the other day, which is an integration between WooCommerce and Amazon's fulfillment service. So you can hold your product in stock at Amazon and they will fulfill WooCommerce orders for you. And I actually had two of the same products. So two different developers, the same core product. Right? We need an integration to send orders to Amazon's fulfillment center. Sounds pretty simple, right? So one of them was absolutely excellent. You can see all the orders. You can put your API keys where you need to. There's a very clear screen. You can see where your products are matched in WooCommerce and in Amazon. Everything works perfectly. You know, it shows you how much of your order has been sent to Amazon, if any of it at all. And it just works. But then there's the other one. Okay, so the other one, is a, a, it's a visible sigh, okay, because it is so incorrect. Okay, like I said, this is a science. There's a switch, and it works. If, if you know, there's those, those animal feeding machines where you put the food in the top, and then the dog, like, presses a button, and the food comes out. This is that, right? There is a switch. You can press that button every day, and it will work every time to build a new product, or a new business, or a new service, or just to build a new feature into a product. The switch works. So this, just to dial back, so this guy had built the same tool with five times as much code and there was no screen that showed you which products of your, in your store were actually in Amazon. There was no screen to show you that. There was a settings screen and that was it. And I looked at the product and said, well actually there's nothing for me to review here because you're not actually given anything, you're not giving value. You're just giving me a screen and a bunch of adverts down the side of the settings page. So, I mean, WordPress SEO, anybody? Adverts down the side of a settings page? Yeah, um, that's another, another discussion point. But basically they were trying to hide. They were trying to hide the fact that they'd actually not built anything. Just by putting all these little things like the super awesome ultimate, you know, click here to, to get traffic to your website. You know, just, it's, it's all fluff. So, focus on what or where the value lies. You know, speaking to the customer and really understanding what their problem is, is the absolute key. And if that's one customer or 10 customers or 100,000 customers, as long as you demonstrate value with your product, you can move straight through and get that, get the return, right? So, yeah, I mean, I can go on about like WordPress products that are badly named, but We'll, we'll move through there. If your name demonstrates what the product does, you've solved the problem right there. So, it's not all upfront work, right? So at this point, assuming it's a new product, you would have spoken to a customer, you wouldn't have coded anything yet, you'd know what the problem is, but you kind of need to keep repeating this process, and this is, this is the core of what it really is, is listening to them and asking questions. So, what is your problem? How can I solve it? Uh, down the line, you know, would the solution that I'm proposing, um, would that solve your problem? Those kinds of questions. And just keep, keep listening, and just because you'll never know. You know, if, if you're a fashion designer and, someone say, and you say, I make everything in black, and I really want to test out whether people would wear another color if I made it, you can ask questions like that, but they might say to you something like, no, I wouldn't wear another color but I would wear it if you made it in chains, like if there was a chain hanging down the side. Or, you know, you can, you can learn so much just by actually listening to who your customer is. Um, whether it's, you know, anything, a service or a product or a business, it's just important to listen. And basically just keep doing it. Just do it again tomorrow and the next day and the day after that. And I'm not going to put up any graphs or slides or sl slides of... Um, like wheels, there's a very famous wheel of um, ideas, data, and code, and then build, measure, and learn. And 
you know, you guys have seen that a thousand times. But basically what it is, is find a customer, find what their problem is, listen to what they have to say, solve the problem, and do it again tomorrow. Right? And what it all comes down to really is this quote from Eric Ries. So if you, if you guys haven't read The Lean Startup, definitely give it a read. It's, it's really, really an interesting take on, on the whole validating a product, validating a business. So what he's basically saying is, you know, at the core of all the science, you do need a magic idea, right? So you need something that will make it work. So like um, I, I had this weird thought about, you know, Harry Potter and in herbology, you know, at Hogwarts. Herbology is a science, but you cannot do herbology if you're not a wizard, right? You need that spark to actually do it. So you need an idea that complements the science. But ultimately you need to actually get started and just get off the block. So that's what he's really saying is you need a vision, but you actually need to take that next step from the vision and say, let me do something. And then you get back to this guy right here. So that's how you find him, right? And he's, well, he's actually just right there. So if you, if you didn't know where he was, you found him, he's here. Um, and yeah, he's, he's actually wearing quite a nice shade of Wu Themes blue today as well, which I didn't notice until now. But yeah, that's, that's really what it's about, you know, and we have such an amazing opportunity with WordPress being as open and, and accessible as it is. The barrier to entry is very low. So it's very easy to put something together, put it out there, and fail. Okay? Not a bad thing. If you fail, you do it again tomorrow. And again and again and again until you get it. Because we have the power with the openness of WordPress to just do that over and over again. But it's important to take that step back and use that power responsibly. And that's it. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Maddie. We've got some time for some Q&A with Maddie. Is there anything uh, any of you guys would like to ask? Or was that talk all encompassing? Anything at all. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, it's mine, I got it. Oh, please do. <coughs> uh, if you've got a number of customers, when you say talk to them, different ways, face to face, send out forums, surveys, just <coughs> some ideas on how to get that data so that you can okay. get clear um, what you want to solve for them. So I would say that how is, more, is less important than actually the results of that data. So it's important to measure it. You know, whether you're talking to them face to face or via a form, it's really important to know what you want to do with the data afterwards. That's, that's really the key. So there's a couple of different ways of selling your idea to someone. And it kind of goes through, you, you talk to them about, your, about the problem, right? You can pitch a solution. So it's explore, pitch, and concierge, right? So exploring the idea with a person, that can be just talking. That's, it's easy to do over, over just talking to the person. Um, pitching is something you could potentially do over a form. You could say, would this solution work for you? Uh, or concierge is, you know, hey, I've got this solution, which this is actually the, probably the most passive communication because you can do it entirely over email. You can send an automated email that says, we have a service which builds websites for you, or we will, we will, build, we will set up your online store. Right? But, and it seems really automated and, and clever, but behind the scenes, there's a techie doing all the work. Right? So he's, you're selling the service without the tech aspect of it. In terms of talking to them, the best way to do it is just to go and find who your customer is first. Because if it's a student at UCT, then the best place to go is the UCT library. Right? And to actually talk to them, like face to face. Because, or if it's, if it's let's say it's people over 65, Facebook is not the answer. You kind of need to actually go and speak to those people and you know, figure out where they are and just go right to them because they're not going to be on Facebook. They're not going to check the email. You know, so it's very important to identify who that customer segment is first and then where they are already. That's why you know, people on social media has been so successful because you're engaging directly on the platform where the customer is. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Anyone else have a, a question for Matty? Yeah, that gentleman over there. Um, hi. Hey. At um, Woo Themes, when yeah. you guys are building new themes or product add-ons, 
are you focusing on um, satisfying your existing customers or let's say when you create a new style of theme say for photographers are you trying to bring in new customers more um, okay so I can give you it's a very much on a product by product basis but I'll give you a good example so with WooCommerce, you know, you've got a guy who set up his store right now. He's in year one. You know, so you've got to educate that guy on what he needs to get up and running. So that's a particular type of product. Like maybe he's running um, Jigo Shop or Magento. So he needs something to bring those products in. So you speak to him like that. Oh, by the way, you need a payment gateway. We will educate you on what payment gateway you need. Um, so it's a lot about th th that kind of approach in year one. It's not about the type of product necessarily. But where it gets you know, specific to your question is year two. The guy's got his store up and running already, so he just needs to maintain it. He doesn't want to log in there every day to know what's going on. He's out on the road. You know, he's selling his product to, to different vendors. So he just needs some way of keeping, log keeping track of, of what's going on. So we created a sales reports emails extension. So daily, monthly, weekly, however you need it, you can get an email with the top selling products in your store. So he can just keep tabs on what's going on. So we largely try to build a product that solves a problem for an existing customer. Because you know, when, you, when you look at like new customer acquisition, that's very difficult. But solving a problem for someone who's standing right in front of you is, is the best place to start. You know, um, but in terms of, of new customer acquisition, we often do listen to you know, what customers are asking for like in terms of a photography you mentioned photography so we are building a photography extension which could actually be very well geared to a new customer but at the same time it's leveraging knowledge that we've gained from existing customers so we're at that stage where it's not necessarily about focusing directly on building for new customers all the time anymore okay thanks Got another question for you here Maddie yeah. this might be slightly off topic hey. So just speak like right into it. Right. Yeah. Um, WooCommerce is free. Yes. Why did you decide to make it free? When I mean, what makes you decide to charge for a product or make it free? It's not off topic at all. Um, because it's it's kind of also your customer, in a way. Um, but with WooCommerce specifically, purely traction, just market share and traction all the way. You know, if there were existing e-commerce platforms out there. Right, so Magento, et cetera, et cetera. And there were e-commerce for WordPress out there, but they were terrible. They were absolutely terrible. So we just needed to get right in there and say, we need this market share, right? And the best way to do that is to put a core product out for free and then to educate people around what they need and why they should use the product. I mean, free is a huge, is a huge draw card for people, um, particularly in WordPress, because WordPress itself is free. Um, you know, show of hands, who's ever had someone say, why are you charging me for building this website? WordPress is free. Uh, everybody. So, yeah, I think, with, I think that's really the thing, is talking to the customer. So if, th there's actually a funny story that, I can't remember what the scenario was, but somebody told me that they had offered a product and the price was too low. The customer told them their price was too low. So... If you can charge $99 and you're charging them $29, maybe they won't buy it because they feel it's too low. Maybe they feel that impacts the quality or the trust of the brand. So, yeah. But do you think making WooCommerce free impacted the quality of the brand? I think it gained a huge amount of traction, actually, just a huge amount of equity there. Because we said, hey, we've, you know, we've invested hundreds of thousands of man hours into this product and just made it free. So... I think really it's, cool. Yeah, it's it's something one can really go with. Yeah. Cool. I think we have time for one more question. If anyone's interested, yes, sir. Hi. How's it? Can you hear me? Great. Yeah, totally. Um, <coughs> you've been talking a lot about your customers, but uh, my first thought here was, like, my loyalty is actually to you. I develop websites for people, but when they say I want an online shop, my immediate thought is you. Because I know, oh, these are your products, these are your extensions, this is what I can give the client based on that at the best price and so on and so on. When you talk about customers, do you focus more on these kinds of agencies who actually use your product properly? Because 
those are existing clients. They know what their clients are looking for. Do you build for them, knowing that, oh, this is the guy that could actually then market this and then find a, a way to use it? Or do you try and find the end user, like the guy who doesn't know any developers, he's found this thing, oh, this is cool, maybe this is what I want. Mm. Um, where do you kind of find is your, your, the majority of your business coming from and who do you actually then target your products towards? It's a really interesting question because we're actually going through that, that whole phase right now as well. I'm sure Joel can attest to this. If just knowing who the customer is, is it's because we have so many different facets of the business. You know, there's, there's a can, like a Canvas customer, for example. We were marketing Canvas as a developer tool for years, right? And then we spoke to Canvas customers and they love the point and click stuff, right? They're not coders. And if you say to a Canvas customer, here's some code to put in to make the header blue. They'll look at you funny because they just want a button, you know? And we had to learn that the hard way with Canvas in particular. But I'd say as a whole business offering, we're really marketing a toolkit. So a toolkit that's really aimed at agencies. You know, the point and click stuff and anyone should be able to set up any product because product setup should be easy, right? It can be... This is, this is the whole thing. So if your product is easy to set up, it doesn't matter who's setting it up. They should just know how to do it. You know, if it says, place API key in this field, here's a link to get your API key. Anyone can click a link. You know, that's, that's how easy it should be. It seems daunting, but if you break it down into that core principle. So yeah, we're marketing largely to, ag well, we're talking largely to agencies and to developers and people who are looking for that toolkit. But at the same time, the core philosophy is really just to help people to sell online. So it can be anyone. You know, we, we, I think we're trying to work out more at the moment who that person is. So not, not just sell, like, you know, helping people sell online, but say helping um, innovative agencies sell online. You know, just, well, I'm glad that was closed. Um, yeah, just making sort of a niche customer specifically. Um, short answer, yeah, largely to agencies or people that need a toolkit of of uh, services or features to, to put the website online. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. That's uh, unfortunately all the time we have for Maddie for questions. Give it up for Maddie.